After days of protests on the streets of Charlotte, North Carolina, police still, still have not released video of the shooting of Keith Lamont Scott. But today, NBC News obtained video from Scott's family that offers a tragic, gut-wrenching look at what transpired on that fateful Tuesday. The video was taken by Scott's wife, who was heard telling police her husband has a traumatic brain injury. She pleads with her husband to obey authorities and pleads with the police not to fire. We don't see the shooting itself. We only hear it. But that makes this footage no less disturbing. We're going to play some of it for you right now. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. He has no weapon. He has no weapon. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. He didn't do anything. He doesn't have a gun. He has a TBI. He's not going to do anything to you guys. He just took his medicine. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, 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 don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? He better not be dead. He better not be dead. We're here over here at 50, uh, 50, um, 9453 Lexington Court. These are the police officers that shot my husband, and he better live. He better live. Because he didn't do nothing to them. Frightening. Uh, you, you watch that. You, you cannot react other than your stomach gut wrenching. We unfortunately, we Margaret, we've seen too many of these, whether it's weekly or monthly. How does this latest infuse into the national dialogue, up the dialogue, and particularly as we're heading into Monday night's debates? You have so many elements at play, uh, and this is already having a major impact. Let's set the presidential implications aside just for a second. Uh, it's impossible not to be moved by the sound and the images that you see in that video. Uh, if you go back to Ferguson and then go more recently to Dallas and then move to this, you see this continuum. And every time there's a national dialogue, a debate about it, a calls for reconciliation and healing and understanding, and, and we're redirected toward another incident like this. You know, but it has the potential to unite or the potential to divide. It has the potential to turn people out mm -hmm. has the people to turn a potential to turn people off and that's I think what we will we will take shape in the next few days you know when you're a parent you tend to lens everything through that I was watching an interview with Brian Gumbel was it being interviewed by Charlie Rose and he said to Charlie Rose it's not fair that my son has a dramatically higher chance of being stopped or being killed every time he leaves the house that's a reality that's a reality every black man lives with on the flip side you have police officers in the heat of the moment. My grandfather's a police officer. In the heat of a moment, um, the Tulsa situation, very different situation. I, I, I mean, uh, this poor guy has his hands up. You just cannot believe you're watching it. Here, unfortunately, you don't see we can't what's see. going on. That's what right. you do take away in listening to his wife, you get the sense the, the man was ill in some way. We obviously talked about traumatic brain injury. And she was calm at one point. She, when she was saying to her husband, don't get out, it, she almost didn't seem that concerned. And then obviously she heightened. Um, there's more to come. Obviously, we're going to need to see the, the police video. The police uh, camera was not on the actual shooting police officer. Who was African American? It was on a different police officer. We haven't seen that yet. So there's still more to come. Uh, just a situation that does not have a simple answer. Okay, but Donnie, so now we do look toward Monday, and we look toward that first debate, we look toward the presidential election. What do you think the implications are going to be on that level? You know, I think it's interesting. Hillary Clinton is going down to Charlotte this weekend. I, I think you, you hate to politicize any event, but that's what we're doing here. I think this dramatically, I don't want to say helps Hillary Clinton because it's even the wrong choice of word, but plays into who she is as a candidate. You know, if you see everything that's happened, every time there was a terrorist attack, Donald Trump, the first, uh, or the horrible, horrible attack in Orlando, Donald Trump was, yeah, I was right. You know, thanks for the congratulations on his right. And even the other day, his comment about stop and frisk, talk about throwing kerosene on a situation. Now, forget that stop and frisk has been ruled unconstitutional by a federal judge. Forget that it has not even worked. But to not have the, the understanding, to not have the unification gene in your brain, the empathy gene in your brain, to know that is not the moment, even if that's what you believe in, to throw that in there. So to me, he is an igniter, and Hillary Clinton is much more of a unifier, so I think this plays much more to her. 
I think it does have the potential uh, certainly to galvanize this debate and we'll put him on the spot about those questions, right? But Hillary Clinton's problem and concern has always been in uh, states like North Carolina and Florida, you know, can you turn out the African-American vote? If this is a galvanizing incident that, that, uh, that turns out that vote, um, because people feel that it matters who is elected. That's one thing. If it just makes people feel disaffected, right, and feel that it, it makes no difference whatsoever, you know, if, if, uh, if these problems happen under Barack Obama, wouldn't they happen any other president? It could be problematic, actually, counterintuitively for him. Obviously, the big issue has been who's got the electorate right in the polling. And obviously, what, where is that African-American vote? They are not emotionally, enthusiastically turning out for Clinton. We know that. There's a big concern. This could be their course salaver. This could be the thing that galvanizes, you said, that entire community obligates. I know that if I'm a leader in the African American community, if I was somebody that was on the fence about voting, this gets me out to vote. This is personal. This is emotional. This is real. So both in the debate forum, but more importantly, in the get out the vote thing, which is really going to decide this election, what that electorate ends up looking like. To me, this could be a galvanizing moment for the entire Democratic Party. It, it, you hate using the word galvanizing with something like this, but yes. Doesn't matter what the video shows, if any of the videos are conclusive. You know what, we've seen too, the, the reality is when you put this with Ferguson, when you put this with Tulsa last week, this is a problem that African Americans live with every day. This is, you know, us white folk, we can empathize, but we can't feel it. And I, I think that it, it is such a core, primal, self-survival issue that I do think this will drive people out.